What's up guys, it's Mike for Sim Racing 604 and today we are going to be talking about Direct Drive and uh, specifically how it relates to Assetto Corsa and Project Cars 2. So ever since I came on this channel and talked a bit about how I have a Direct Drive wheel now, I purchased one on a Black Friday sale, I've been getting a ton of questions, what's the experience been like, um, are you faster? and just general questions about force feedback, excuse me, about direct drive wheels. So um, we're gonna get into that and I'll share my experience uh, first with the Settle Corsa, then with Project Cars 2 later, and just kind of give you an idea of what I've been experiencing so far with direct drive. Um, but real quick up off the top, um, just wanna explain what direct drive is as opposed to the more common, um, you know, Thrustmaster, Fanatic, uh, Logitech wheels. So what direct drive actually is, is Instead of using belts and gears to translate the motor's power into the wheel, um, what this is, um, and you can use any wheel, the wheel is not special, the steering wheel is not special. Uh, what it is though is this snaps on to the motor. Uh, no belts, no gears, anything like that. You literally snap your steering wheel onto a servo motor. Uh, it's much, much faster to translate the actions. Uh, the game data is feeding into the motor and much, much stronger at the same time. Um, to give you an idea of strength, the whole reason you're only seeing this wheel and not seeing the servo motor it attaches to is because I had to bolt it down onto my rig. Um, it can be quite a violent experience. <laughs> but uh, very, very um, so uh, jumping into a settle Corsa here, um, basically a settle Corsa was the first one I had, I wanted to sort of attack with the direct drive wheel. So I got the the you know Sim Commander software for my AccuForce wheel installed and immediately jumped into a settle Corsa. I left everything stock and there was quite an experience actually. I jumped into the uh, 2017 Porsche RSR and just the wheel rumble from the uh, engine RPMs was, was quite something. It really took me, uh, took me by surprise. I didn't think it would be that immediate. And went out there on track and it was like steering the Queen Mary. It was extremely tough. I was two-handing it around most corners at Imola and um, really, really tough. But at the same time, um, it was very alive, is the best way I would describe uh, my force feedback experience, my first direct drive force feedback experience. So um, moving on from that, I started tweaking settings and this and that, and the first thing I did was dial it way, way back. Um, and then it just, it, it went sideways for me. For those who've connected with me offline a bit, um, you know I was ready to just throw this thing into a bonfire to stay warm in this Canadian winter because I was so frustrated with it. Um, I didn't find the Sim Commander software to be particularly user friendly. I had sort of a eureka moment uh, very, very recently actually, and I kind of get it now. Um, I would say I'm 70%, maybe 80%, um, what I would like this wheel to be and I can tell you it is hands down much much better than my T300 was by, by a long shot, it doesn't even compare and it's not just the strength um, I'm a pretty big guy so I like my wheels strong and what I noticed with force feedback in the past with my T300 and uh, I read this a lot of other places as well, my G29 was no different um, is that you sacrifice uh, uh, strength in the name of you know, uh, accurate force feedback. So if you turn your force feedback up too strong, then you're going to lose, you know, touch of curbs, you're going to lose road sensation, you might not feel the slip as well, that kind of thing. So generally, it's understood that you keep your force feedback strength low in order to feel more on the road, and that absolutely makes sense. But with this force feedback wheel, and keep in mind the AccuForce that I drive is not, um, you know, the strongest on the market. It's a 13 Newton meter motor. Um, you can get 20, I think, I've seen, what have I seen, 26, I think, so effectively double um, the strength I have. And I can tell you, again, as a pretty strong guy, you do not need more than 13 Newton meters of torque for your servo motor. Um, so very, very strong, but at the same time, extremely accurate. It's so fast to react. So depending on the sim you're driving, we're talking about a set of Corsa today, um, it can be downright violent. So um, 
with the Settle Course, what I've found, now that I've got things sort of dialed in, is that uh, these laser scan tracks are absolutely incredible. Every single bump you drive over that you wouldn't have noticed before, uh, or at least that I didn't notice with my T300, um, does shake the wheel. You feel it. You feel exactly what's upsetting the car. If there was previously, um, you know, a corner that you never understood why you oversteered in, or never understood what was upsetting the car's balance, you're probably, if you've got your force feedback dialed in with your direct drive wheel, you're going to understand that. You're going to feel a bump or, and I, I've heard other people say this, you can't explain it other than it feels like you can feel the weight of the car shifting through the wheel. And now, I know that's very difficult to imagine, but it really is. Um, what have I driven? I've driven Lime Rock Park in R-Factor 2, and uh, I'm trying to think what I've driven in the Cell Corsa. Um, Nothing's immediately coming to mind, but if you go over a crest, if you go over a crest, you can actually feel, um, you know, the weight shifting, you feel the front tires getting light, that kind of thing, and it just translates to a better driving experience. So you understand exactly why you're losing traction in certain areas, and that's an absolutely amazing feeling. And like I said, it's just so much better than my T300, and I actually like my T300. It's my backup wheel, it's what I'm using for this guy here, but um, for PC now, I would not trade this for anything in the world. It's so amazing, now that I finally have it dialed in. Um, for those wondering, yes, I will do a tutorial, but I, I shouldn't be teaching it at this point. I'm far from a PhD, I'm a second year at uh, Sim Commander at best. But uh, once I have things more understood, I will do a tutorial video on, uh, on the Sim Commander software. For the time being, what you need to know is Assetto Corsa is absolutely amazing with or without direct drive, but it just kind of takes it to that next peak, that next, next plateau when you have the direct drive wheel. Like I said, the laser scan tracks that are, you know, uh, throughout Assetto Corsa really, really translate well to this direct drive wheel. Every curb, every bump in the road, uh, the RPMs of the engine shaking the wheel, that kind of thing are just incredible. Um, I've caught more spins since I got uh, direct drive than I have, you know, in, in that two weeks since I've got direct drive, I've caught more spins than I did in the previous, you know, several months or maybe a year uh, without it. it. It's just incredible. As soon as the car gets upset, you feel it, you catch it. The reaction time is so quick in this thing, your input and its output um, are so, so fast that it just it all translates so well. You can catch slides. It, it's just amazing. It really, really is. So my experience with the Seto Corsa has been all positive. Can't say enough good things uh, about the AccuForce. And yeah, direct drive absolutely rocks in a Seto Corsa. And now let's take a look at Project Cars 2. Alright guys, so now let's talk a little bit about Project Cars 2. So Project Cars 2 Force Feedback is uh, definitely something that's, uh, I guess you could call it controversial in the world of sim racing. So from the inception, I've been um, a fan of the Force Feedback in Project Cars 2. I stood behind Slightly Mad Studios and what they did with this title. Um, you know, there was times, in, there's certain car and track combinations where you really see what they were going for and it feels very, very sharp. Um, I put that out there before as my opinion and stood behind Project Cars 2 and it's literally cost me subscribers. A lot of people really just want to hate on this game, but uh, I've sort of been in their corner for a while. I always felt it was kind of a, a notch below a Settle Corsa, but... Um, yeah, just my opinion, uh, but with the direct drive wheel, what we find, or what I find anyway, is that the gap between Assetto Corsa, if it was this and Project Cars 2 was here, uh, the gap is somewhat widened. Uh, we find that, uh, or sorry, once again, what I found is that the T300 somewhat, um, you know, translate did a good job of translating for me um, what Project Cars 2 force feedback was like, and uh, whereas the direct drive wheel in a Seto Corsa kind of uh, exaggerates and lets you feel every road bump and every curb and this kind of thing, while at the same time maintaining the very very strong force feedback. Um, we, you know, expect from a direct drive wheel. 
Project Cars 2 feels kind of numb, is the best word I can feel. It's not to say it's not enjoyable, I still enjoy driving it more than the T300, but I would say the difference between the T300 that I was driving and the AccuForce Direct Drive Wheel in Assetto Corsa was a huge, huge jump and made me love Assetto Corsa even more. Um, but Project Cars 2 is not as much of a jump, and again, you can sort of see the gap between um, what uh, Assetto Corsa is capable of in terms of all its laser scan tracks and, and the bumps, how they translate, and what Project Cars 2 is. So again, not to say it's not fun, I still have a blast driving Project Cars 2, it just hasn't blown my mind in terms of the force feedback detail. Um, so even turned up, it's not nearly as strong feeling as Assetto Corsa, but uh, at the same time, um, it loses some curb detailing, that kind of thing. You hit grass, you feel it, but it's not, you know, it's not going to uh, really be too, too violent or too, too dramatic. And sometimes you don't even notice uh, uh, driving over the grass. I was doing a race and I actually passed somebody on the grass. Um, I got spun. <laughs> and I, I recovered it, they didn't get too far ahead of me, and I just went on the grass and went around a group of free cars. So that to me seems a bit unrealistic, but that's perhaps an anecdotal one-off case. But uh, overall, I'm liking Project Cars 2, but again, uh, the, the point of this video is to sort of describe the feelings of uh, the direct drive wheel versus my standard T300 or my T29. And I would say the differences are much, much more subtle with Project Cars 2. It doesn't feel like I'm giving up a lot by going with a uh, sort of more consumer wheel as opposed to the direct drive wheel. It feels a lot closer. Um, again, not to say it's not enjoyable. I think it's still above my T300, just uh, less uh, sort of dramatic, I guess is the word. More smooth, though. So, uh, in summary, guys, uh, we'll wrap things up here. So, uh, a couple questions. I hope I've answered sufficiently the question of, um, you know, what's it been like. So, uh, Seto Corsa seems, uh, again, violent. I hate to use that word, but uh, it can be. If you have the force feet feedback turned to the max, and you're feeling every curb, you're feeling every road bump, it can literally pull the wheel out of your hands, and so that is the violence. Violence. However, there is the strength, and starting at the top, you will not, well, I'd say most people will not be able to fight a car around the track uh, with 100% force feedback. It is a lot, a lot of work. But even if you dial it back to 70, 80%, something like that, it's still very strong and so responsive in a set of course. So those laser scan tracks are just amazing. You feel every last bump and the translation is so fast. As soon as your wheels start slipping, and again, um, if you're kind of going over a crest or something like that or down a hill, and you can, you can actually feel through the wheel how the weight is transferring and how you're losing grip and the response is so quick that you can catch those things so uh, it's telling you faster and you're responding faster and you're going to recover spins it's just amazing in a set of Corsa uh, projects cars too um, same sort of thing you feel the road bumps a lot less you feel the curves a lot less there's just a lot less detail being given back from the game um, but still a very pleasurable experience um, and to answer the question of has it made me faster, um, no. I've only had about two weeks with this wheel, and I'm coming off a five-week hiatus from sim racing altogether, and then we had Christmas season and that kind of thing, so I haven't had a ton of time. I would say I'm kind of in the tw probably 20 to 30 hours invested in this direct drive wheel. Actually, no, sorry, more than that. But whatever it is, I haven't had a ton of time. I don't feel 100% comfortable as I was. Like, I just put so many hours into that T300. Um, the direct drive wheel, I haven't had that much time. Um, has it made me slower? No, not really. Um, just kind of getting used to it. Um, it's, I would say, for per minute, I'm maybe losing kind of a half second off my best lap time. So, um, much more consistent. I can feel everything. I spin a lot less. My laps are much, much more consistent. Even the difficult new uh, RSS mods, which I absolutely love, I'm having uh, a lot less trouble than I thought I would. Those are tough cars to drive. They really are. And, um... Yeah, I've, I've just become much, much more consistent, less spins, things like that. And um, has it made me faster? No. So 
I'm sure in time it will, as that consistently translates to, you know, finding a faster way through the corner, that kind of thing, without having to worry about losing the back end as much. Um, I think I'm going to get quite a bit faster, but just need more hours invested. So, consistency over speed at this point. So, I just want to say thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, direct drive wheels, uh, are they for everybody? Nope, uh, they're definitely price prohibitive to a lot of people. Um, I got mine just with my kind of holiday bonus cash. Um, and yeah, if you're a project. Project Cars 2 guy or a Forza Motorsport guy, something like that, you're probably not going to notice as much from the direct drive wheel. Um, it feels uh, a lot like a, and again, remember, I have a low end direct drive wheel, but it still feels much, much less like a gaming device as it does like a tool sort of thing to uh, help you enjoy games. So, um, is it for everyone? No. No, uh, price notwithstanding, again, if you're a Forza guy, if you're a Project Cars 2 guy, maybe a Project Cars 1 guy, you're probably not going to get too, too much out of the direct drive wheel. However, if you're a sim racer and you have it in your budget and you like a set of course, we're going to do another video about Race Room and R Factor 2 and uh, AMS and what it's done in those games. And quite frankly, it's been amazing. I'll give you a preview of that video. Um, you're going to get a lot out of this wheel. So um, let me know what you think about direct drive wheels. Is it in your future? Are you thinking about getting one? Do you have one? What's been your experience? Overall, mine has been uh, very, very tough to set up. It took me a long time to tweak it uh, for Assetto Corsa. But once I did, I've just been absolutely loving it. Uh, even making this video and trapping those laps um, in the uh, Ferrari 550 or whatever they want to call it, Ferrucci, I guess. Ferruccio, whatever it is, um, I just wanted to drive and drive and drive, and I had to tell myself, okay, take a break, you're supposed to be making a video here, um, it's just taking the fun factor to the next level, especially in a Seto Corsa, so again, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll talk to you guys next time.